Well, it's transfer deadline day here at Kashima, and there are still no additions to the squad at the highest level, whereas two stars have already left in this window. We've got our former club Gifu away at the weekend, but before that, we need a little bit of help today. We've not got any sign of a job offer coming our way, so really, our director of football has got to get it right. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 43 of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. Whisper it quietly, I am sensing the first crisis of the save, and by crisis, I mean the first chance of being sacked, because today, we are back to face FC Gifu, we're clinging on in a race for a top 2 finish, the minimum expectation by the board this year, but my god are we being thrown under the bus. Despite reaching the Champions League final, despite the fact we had a brilliant squad last year and have made tons of money by selling superstars, there have been no sign of any superstars coming in to replace them. We've got key players injured for the rest of the year and we've only had a few youngsters come in. It is deadline day, we're not really being linked with anyone and today we need our director of football to deliver. I don't know if it's just this club, I don't know if it's the last FM update, I guess we won't find out until we move on or this director of football does. So if you're looking forward to seeing what he does today, and whether there is any sense of redemption for him, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. It's going to be a hot weekend in Gifu, who won at home to us last season, and again are overperforming in 10th place this year. They're actually above our last club, Yokohama now, but let's go and have a look at what's happened in the window so far, and then move on to deadline day, because in the transfer market at the minute, there is a link with Janichi Hakaku coming in potentially from Yokohama FM. He's a young defensive and central midfielder who's okay, but again, is an emergency backup at best in this squad. If we go through to the transfer history, the ones that have come in in this window so far, Masaki Satsumi from Kofu is a young left winger with not a lot of ability, doesn't fit our style either. And then Kasuhiko Watanabe from Yokohama FM again. 350 grand, a young holding midfielder. He's okay, and he's got the potential to be a half decent player. Can be an emergency backup in the defensive three and in the midfield two. But ain't going to be winning us any titles or securing us a top two finish. Not in this year or the year after either. So that's the problem at the moment is that these two have come in, and the players that have left the club to make room for them are Ramiz Zaruki to Al Arabi for the best part of 5 million quid. A 30-year-old Algerian midfielder who was the best player at the club. And then Ryota Ishida to FC Tokyo nonetheless, the team who are top of the league and our title rivals, for 3 million quid, who is a good player, was homegrown at the club, only 20 years of age, and had a massive future, probably the best striker at the club with a great personality. So at the moment, I'm feeling a little bit short-changed by this football club, and I feel like they're taking the mick out of us a bit. I'm pretty sure we are. We're out of contract at the end of this season. The board are disappointed that we are not in a top two. They're disappointed we threw the League Cup. We're still going in a Japan Cup, which is important. And we're also struggling to be the most reputable team in Japan. But what do you expect? And I mean this politely. This season, we have sold Machino and Ishida, who were the best two strikers at the club at the end of last season. And we've sold Zaruki, who was the best player at the club full stop. You go back to the end of last season as well. In that summer window, we sold Ibasuki, the best centre half at the club. And although we've sold those four players, the only players we've bought in permanently are Watanabe, who was already here on loan, Sakara Gawa, who is not as good as either of the strikers he's replaced and is now out for the season, a wing back and a striker who are backup level but not exceptional, and a bunch of youngsters. I mean, there's only so much you can do as a manager. So we go into deadline day today, hoping for a little bit of work. Ademfau is being linked with a move away, which would be catastrophic. We've also had links away on loan for a couple of these young players, Araki and Hashimoto, who have been beefing out the squad because of the lack of depth. I just can't believe we're not linked with anyone. And I think that's the thing that's getting to me here. We always had busy deadline days at our previous two clubs, and here it does seem to be a pattern. The fact that they're ignoring areas in the squad planner like right wing back and centre mid where there's clear weaknesses in there 
and we've tried our best to make it obvious even when we've had recruitment meetings, when we've had media questions and we've answered them. We've tried to be as clear as possible but nothing's been doing. I'm going to take part in the day. As you can see from here we have got nearly 8 million remaining and 60 grand on the wage bill because plenty of players have been sold. And if we don't see senior additions today, I'm almost questioning whether it would be realistic to resign at the end of the year, if we're not sacked that is. Because we've been rejected for jobs that we've gone for, we've not been offered interviews or as you saw in the last episode we've had them and been turned down. I just feel like something's got to give at some point because we're going into a spiral that virtually no manager can save us from. And I feel like Kashima, when we leave, if they don't sign big players, they're going to go backwards then as well. So let's get through the final 16 hours, see if anyone of note comes in. We'll be back for news throughout the day. We'll be very, very angry if big players go. And then we'll go and get to Gifu, who probably have a chance to embarrass us again. Well, while not players of note, we're getting offers for several youngsters now. One has been accepted for Kazuki Tamura, the young centre-half who's not very good. But a lot of offers coming in, and if we get any at senior level, I worry we might be losing some as well. No sign of anyone so far today. Oh, please let there be a sign in. I don't know what more I can take. Well, it's really not turning into a good day again. We've got a loan offer for Hashimoto, which has thankfully been rejected. But even a young player the director of football was trying to sign has rejected us to go to a mid-table team. That bodes well, doesn't it? Let's get through the rest of the day. A dent foul, you better not leave. I don't want to sell. They'll have to make it very worth our while. Did you hear that director of football? Tamura has gone on. And that's for 425 grand, a decent fee for a centre half who can't jump. But I'm not interested at this point. I want sign ins, I want something. The squad depth, how can you look at that and not see a problem? How can you look at that and not see a problem? I don't get it. Every other director of football has reacted. We've had recruitment focuses, we've had looks at these positions. It's driving me mad. I think I'm going to go insane if we stay here much longer. I'm looking virtually every hour to see if there's new jobs, but with 11 hours to go, no sign of additions. I'm a very frustrated man, people. Well, with seven hours to go, there's finally an offer for a player in, but don't get excited. It's a one-star ability left back, a player to keep an eye on for the future. Oh, he's crap, he's got a rubbish personality. He's not even a good player for the youth team. This is turning into a real joke now. What are you doing, director of football? You're supposed to be one of the best rated we've ever had. You're not showing it, are you? You've been a joke. Bring back Hiroki Azumi. I'd love to know, actually. Do you know what I'm going to do? After we leave this club, whenever it happens in this save, I'm going to run a holiday experiment. I'm going to put Hiroki Azumi in here as the director of football. I'm going to holiday three transfer windows and see how many good players he gets. That's going to be our test of whether it's the club, whether it's the director of football, or whether it's the FM update. Seven hours remaining. I've nearly fallen off my chair because with six hours to go, don't you readjust your monitors because we have got an offer for a senior wing back. This can't be happening, can it? FC Gifu, the club we're playing at the weekend, not a player that I think was there when we were. Hijiri Kato, 350 grand, two and a half star ability. I'll take it at this point. Rui Leader can play on the right if need be. So it will allow us to strengthen our squad. Oh, he's not really two and a half star, is he? And in wing back positions, he's not. He's a two star wing back. But it's a senior player. It's something. And it's a little bit of depth if we need it. I'm not sure he's going to set the world alight, but he's been playing at top tier level and it is a senior player, which I thought the director of football had completely forgotten about. So six hours to go. Let's see if the ball gets rolling. Hopefully he's a small enough name that he won't end up rejecting us for someone else either. Well, here we meet the limitations of the head coach again. The transfer Hivijiri Kato has been put on hold as FC Gifu have failed to sign a replacement. Now, I'm going to make a very small adjustment here because in the past I've always accepted the delay and never ever has it ended up working out because the other club never get a replacement in. So on this occasion, I'm going to reject the delay because while this is delayed, no other offers get made and I don't want to be in a position where no one comes in again. So with four hours to go, the chances of them getting someone is minute. I'm going to reject it and I know that you're probably going to criticise me for that. 
but there's never ever been an alternative to that not happening and because the director of football just doesn't do anything else while they're waiting i have no choice but to cancel that four hours to go let's see if anyone comes in it's all getting a little bit stressful at the minute Three hours to go, and of course, we're back to young players now. Shoma, Nakahara, another left wing back, but this time, not a senior player, nowhere near senior level, and nearly the same price, which is more worrying. But again, I go back to the same question. How an hour ago did you think, I really need a left wing back? And now you think, no, do you know what? I don't need any senior players. I just don't understand. Three hours to go. This guy will not help us in the slightest. Well, one hour to go, the other guy joined our reserves and we've got a couple of loan offers that have been rejected. However, there is an offer for Yahei Tanaka, a two-star ability, versatile left-sided player with big potential. He's joined the club, I can see that already. He's been offered one and a half grand a week as a future prospect. Just please don't be rubbish. He is absolutely awful. Natural left wing back, I'm not sure. No, he's not two-star ability. How can you be worse in your natural role? Very good physically, diabolical at the rest. We had better players in the third tier, I'm sorry. If that's two-star ability by our squad standards, then we're in very, very big trouble. One hour to go, no senior offers. Another disaster of a day at Kashima Antlers. Who thought this was going to be our big break? Well, the transfer deadline has passed in Japan. Two key players have left the club for a combined £8 million. One backup player was attempted to be signed for 400k on deadline day. And other than that, we've done nothing. So again, we've lost two of our three best players. And now we've just got to keep competing. It is an absolute shower of nonsense, honestly. We're going to keep looking for the job centre each day. These jobs at the minute, unfortunately, they're keeping with their interim. So we can't apply for them. But as soon as we can, we will. And we're going to keep going till we're out. But ultimately... I've got a feeling we're going to get sacked here before we can walk. And that's going to probably reduce the quality of job we can get next time out. Might not even allow us out of Japan. Let's go and get through to the weekend though. Because FC Gifu, well they've managed to keep their full back. I wonder actually, did they sign a replacement in the end? Would he have come in? They signed a player on loan, Yasunaga, who's a centre mid. And they signed that guy as a young keeper. So no, as is the case normally, they didn't get their replacement. And we wouldn't have been able to get him anyway. He is now going to be involved. He'll probably start for them at the weekend. And you just know how it's going to be now. He'll probably score the winner or something. Let's see how we get on then. FC Gifu away. We'll come and have a look at these results in a minute. And how we got to them. It's been inconsistent. It's been less than inspiring. We'll talk through them in a second. Back to face Gifu in a moment. <laughs> Well, we're back for match day at FC Gifu. We're being taunted by ongoing focus updates and the players we could have signed. Loads of quality midfielders and wingbacks in there within our budget, as you'd probably expect. But let's move on to today's game with Kaza Dempfau limited to 75 minutes of action with a few players out injured and suspended. Let's have a look at the schedule of what's been going on. I'm trying to remember when you were last here. It was definitely Vissel Kobe. Which defeat was it? I think it was Yokohama FM. Yes, it was. So since then, we followed up with another defeat in Nagata. I've got to show you this game. It's genuinely hilarious. If we have a look at the stats for it. Two and a half expected goals. 17 shots, five on target. No goals. Of course it isn't. So many strikers out of form or fitness or in a goal drought. And a lack of creativity from wide areas. Who'd have thought it? We have, though, been on a decent run since then, albeit we've played two lower league sides and two out of three more games at home. And when we've gone on the road once, we drew. But we beat Ehime 3 0 with a Suzuki brace and Tabakovic against Hiroshima. Both of those two scored again, with Rui Lida adding a late third. An extra time victory against second tier Sendai. Pretty sure they're bottom of it as well. They were at the time. We beat them 2 1 thanks to Toyota and Tabakovic. A 0-0 draw at Yokohama, our former club. Good goalkeeping display from Bergson. Not the greatest going forward. And then a 3-1 win at home to Shimizu last time. Actually a much better display. But Sakaragawa came on, got injured within five minutes and will now basically miss the rest of the year. Didn't really have a problem at all in his entire time with Yokohama. So he's either unlucky this season or maybe our medical team's not as good. I would suggest that given what we've seen so far. 
but it is a big win. It was a good performance from Kato to end his little goal drought, and Kostic got one as well, which was crucial. And more importantly in that one, we came from behind, which was nice. The position that leaves us in in the league now without Leader and Sakaragawa today, as well as the two that have been sold, is 12 points behind Leader's Tokyo with two games in hand, although of course our director of football has now armed them with our previous best striker. Arawa Reds are eight points behind with two games more played, and Yokohama FM one point ahead with one more game played. So if we win the games in hand, very big if, we'll be on 57 points. One of those is against Nagata, who made it very difficult for us last time. And the other one, I'm pretty sure, is Sapporo, who are up in the top half. But we've got a few tough games coming up. We've basically got to play all of the top sides away. Last season's champions, Kawasaki, the top two in Arawa and Tokyo back-to-back, -back, albeit with a month's gap between them. So it's not going to be an easy run-in. And if we do do something special this year... We're going to have done it the hard way. But a top two finish is what we need. And at FC Gifu, our first club, we are hoping for a bit of a special day. Inaga and Kabota still on the wings for them, the originals. They've still got Ortiz and Najim in that back four. And Kato's there as well. The man that, in a different universe, could have been playing here today. The deadline day works out differently. They've only got 10,000 fans in, so they're obviously not pulling up too many trees either, despite their decent league position. But let's go and have a look at the 11 we can put out. We're being recommended to rotate hugely, which I'm obviously not going to do. I'm going to bring Kostic in at left wing back. Sakara Gawa will be replaced on the bench by God knows who at this point. We've got Matsuo who can go on. We've got Toyota who can go on. And then we really are down to the bare bones. Nakamura is a 16 year old who isn't improving that quickly. And then you've got Araki who up front has been poor, physically isn't great. Hashimoto is young and not particularly good physically. So we are talking about desperate measures if we get beyond this squad. The rest of the team, though, I am going to leave as it is. It played well against Shimizu last time. And that means that the full team for today is Bergson in goal, a back three of Watanabe, Ademfa and Wada. You may be wondering as we go through this why everyone's star ratings have gone up. It's only because the best two players have left. Zaruki was the four-star player before. Now he's gone, Watanabe's the best player at the club, and as a result, everyone else's star rating has come up, because it's compared to the rest of your squad, and the rest of our squad isn't as good. Uh, a wing back, we've got Hander and incoming Kostic, midfield is Hainan and Yasuda, and then Araki is behind Kato and Tabakovic up front, and the bench is a little bit threadbare. So let's go and get through to the big game at Gifu. It is a game that on paper we should still have a strong enough 11 to win. But the problem is we've not regularly been clinical in front of goal this year. We've been hit and miss. We've been a little bit patchy. And that makes us very hard to predict. So as we go away to Gifu, a stadium we have spent probably the most games in our career in so far. We are hoping we'll be able to continue our good run there. But this time with a very different team. Five unbeaten after, what, three defeats in a row. Let's see which team turns up today. As early doors, it's Inaga. Away down the right, but intercepted by Hainan with a good challenge. Wader plays out to Yasuda for us, and it's back to Wader in the defence again. Apologies for the weird jump cut there. We had a little falling tower outside the window as Kostic gets down the left wing. Chance to put in the cross. Tabakovic, the big man's up. And the header is just over the bar via the crossbar. And it's a good start, but look now. Araki is one of the best players at the club. I think he is the best one left going forwards. And he's now got a twisted knee. I just can't risk it. It's becoming infuriating. We've got Suzuki who can play the number 10 and has done it well when he's come in recently. But ultimately, we've got no other backup strikers now. So if he gets injured, then what do we do? Agawa can play number 10. He's okay at it. And I'm going to go for him now. But this is becoming threadbare to say the least. We're going to switch Agawa and Yasuda like that. And hopefully... We'll now get a bit of an outcome because we're 10 gone. We've been the better side. But our best player left at the club has now got injured too. Hopefully taking him off will prevent a long-term knock. As Yasuda loses the header, Agawa misses out as well. Not yet up to the pace of the game as Hainan goes back to Wader. He cuts in from right centre half. Had a very simple ball into midfield but instead played cautiously back. And then the second time he's played it and it's gone wrong. Thankfully the touch from the Gifu player is beyond heavy. This is a low quality match so far. Kostic finds Yasuda. Away down the left, it's intercepted. 
Some of the touches are diabolical here. And we've not got a great team now, which is possibly why. Watanabe heads away. Yasuda bottled that challenge. It's gone through to Okazawa. Runs all the way himself. Goes for the shot. And it almost curls in. I feel Bergson may have had it covered, but I don't want to say that with any confidence. With 15 minutes gone, it's the first shot for Gifu. Oh, we've given it away again. What is happening? Where has my team gone? Is it just that so many stars have been sold, they're now disheartened and think we've got no chance? Because there's no other explanation for five yard passes going astray with this much regularity. We're five unbeaten. We were brilliant against Shimizu last week. And now we can't pass the ball out of defence. No reaction to the encouragement, which is very unusual for our team. And we're 10 to half time. We do get a response now. But Gifu have had more of the shots and we've offered nothing since that first 10. At half time, it's going to be nil nil again. And I feel it's dragging into another one of those frustrating games where we just can't find a goal. I'm going to say we can win it, but the fact that I'm now being recommended by the assistants say they're proud with a nil nil at Gifu is a worry. Where do the media predict us now? I'm sorry to get distracted, but just intrigued. They've got us third still, above Vissel Kobe. That seems a little bit off, I've got to be honest with you. With 55 gone, it's been an interesting one. Certainly not a particularly pleasant one, though. And I'm looking at the subs I can make, because we've not even had a shot second half. Where has my team gone? I can't take the front two off, because they're too important. I'm going to take Yasuda off for Suzuki, put him number 10. I'm going to bring Asada on for Wader in defence. And I'm going to take Kostic off. No, I can't because there's no one who can play on the left. I'm going to have to leave it at that for now. Where on earth is the performance? Do we go positive? Whenever I've done that before, we've then been completely sucker punched. But I'm running out of ideas and I don't just want to get a drab draw out of this. I'm going to go attacking. We're going to take Hander off from Atoma. Fresh legs. The front two have both been shocking. I'm going to put Suzuki up front for Tabakovic, and I'm going to put Tabakovic off for Matsuo. This is not where we wanted to be at this stage of the game. We're getting no response, and now we've gambled. We're probably going to get caught out as a dent foul. Finds Matoma, cutting in from the right. Matsuo finds Suzuki. Through the Kato, are you onside? Oh, it's hit the woodwork. It bounces down, somehow stays out. They say Kashima are playing some beautiful stuff. We've had one shot on target. Let's not push it. We've encouraged them. We're doing everything we can. We've just lost the quality. It almost looks like, and it's funny this, it almost looks like we've sold both of our best strikers in the last year, our best creative midfield player, and then our other best midfielder and other best striker are injured. It's almost what it looks like. Not quite sure how on earth that could happen. But it's funny how these things do play out in reality, isn't it? It's another two drop points. It's an okay result. We look solid enough defensively. But we ain't finishing in the top two. I just don't see how we do it unless these two sides have a massive drop off. I think third place is the limit of our ambitions. And it's a shame because Kawasaki and Vissel Kobe have both had a poor year. But we can't take advantage. Iraqi's out seven days, may miss the next one. We just haven't really got a goal for it away from home. I wonder if we have to change shape a bit. We had a 0-0 at Yokohama. We had a 2-1 defeat at Shimizu. We had a 3-0 at Osaka. Yeah, we bar that Vissel Kobe game on camera last time where we were brilliant. And then that one at Mashida. We've not really had a goal threat on the road for a while. We kind of relied on a target man approach when we had Sakaragawa. We definitely relied on some of the quality of Ashida and Zaruki who have been sold without replacement this window. The good news though, a clean sheet, the unbeaten run continues. But I can assure you that between now and the next episode, I'm going to be looking at this job centre screen a lot because Salinatana's come up, we'll go for that. Might be too big for us, but we're going to try it. We've also got the opportunity maybe to look at Brazil. A club that has got a three and a half star reputation, has got a key player who's very good. Not sure we're going to get it, but I'm going to give it a go. Don't you worry about that. And then the other one that really looks interesting is Sheffield Wednesday because this is a club who have only got a two and a half star, are stuck in League One, haven't got a great squad. That would probably be a unrealistic step down, but 
At the moment, we'll see what happens with those two, both received and not immediately rejected. There are a lot of jobs potentially coming up in both Argentina and the MLS as well, and I could see the US as a route back to Europe could be an interesting one, and a league we've not managed in before in a live version of the head coach on camera. But let's go and get through to the schedule and see when we're next going to return, because I think ultimately, looking at the rest of the season now, the two big league games come in the middle, which are Tokyo and Arawa. And I would imagine, given the four-week break there, if we do beat Yokohama at home in the cup, which I would expect to, then the semi-final will probably be in the middle somewhere. So, let's see what date the semi-final is due. It should be, oh, 23rd of August. Oh no, that's the date of it. Yeah, so end of September. So it will be in between those two. So we will come back, hopefully, for an All-Japan Cup semi-final. And then Arawa or FC Tokyo depending on whether we've still got an outside sniff at the title or, or whether by that stage we're desperately chasing second. We'll wait and see what happens after our next few matches where mercifully most of them are at home to poorer sides. But if you did enjoy this one, a good effort on the pitch but off it an absolute disaster again, then please do put a thumbs up on it. How have we had such a contrast in director of football from the brilliance at FC Gifu, the busyness at Yokohama? I just don't understand how there's no action. There's no intent to try and sign people. It's so quiet. It's so reserved. It makes no sense at all. And we're trying to get out, but now we're getting the odd interview, but no real opportunity to move on. The season's in swing in Europe, so maybe we'll get an opportunity from a club that's struggling. But if you want to stay up to date and find out and you did enjoy this one, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know, should I just take any job at this point? Because we are being sold really short here. How you can sell two more key players and sign nothing to replace them, then be disappointed at the manager's job. I just don't get it. If you want to stay up to date and see how the rest of the season goes though, and whether we're still here when the next episode comes around, then do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. A happy new year to all of you as this is the first head coach episode since. We will be back tomorrow with South End United. And then this one will return in two days time. But in the meantime, you can find all the other stuff up in the eye above. We had a new guide on New Year's Eve. We had a little channel update yesterday. And of course, the Twitch channel and football podcast are both up there too. But thank you for watching. Happy New Year. I'll see you back here in a couple of days time where hopefully, please, someone has offered us a job.